An old friend is back with the 49ers. They have re-signed their receiver, Trent Taylor. And I guess I should say more specifically their punt returner, Trent Taylor, after three seasons away. George Kittle, really happy about this. Why is George happy about this? Well, because Trent, good old friend. These are the two original fifth-round draft picks of this regi regime, and they called them or they called the time quality time. That was something coined by Kittle and Taylor back when they were both of the 49ers from 2017 to 2020. Look at that. The fifth round magic in one picture. Kittle out of Iowa. Trent Taylor out of Louisiana Tech. They're both back with the 49ers now. So Taylor back for a very specific role, and I'll explain what it is right now. The 49ers need a higher floor at punt returner. There were some fans who were initially disappointed by this move, and uh, I'm sorry, you just don't get it. The 49ers of all franchises should know that muffed punts can absolutely destroy you. They've suffered two of the most gut-wrenching losses in NFL history that have been directly attributable to issues on the punt return. I shouldn't have to bring up Kyle Williams, but I will because the 2011 season was destroyed by Kyle Williams in the NFC Championship game against the Giants. An otherwise really good 49ers team met its demise. This past season in the Super Bowl, it wasn't really Ray Ray McLeod's fault, although some people say that he should have dove onto the fumbled punt. It hit Darrell Luter Jr., though. Still, without getting into details and semantics, punt return issues cost the 49ers. The overarching truth is that punt returns in the NFL have become an increasingly coverage-dominated play. In fact, two seasons ago, we went almost the entire year without a single punt return touchdown in the entire league. So it is imperative that you don't screw punt returns up. If you're not getting the upside out of punt returns, if the touchdowns aren't happening because the coverage units have charted everything out so meticulous, meticulously that there's no room for a return, you better not screw these plays up. And the 49ers have seen the downside of screwing these plays up in both that NFC Championship game against the Giants over 10 years ago and in the Super Bowl just a few months ago against the Chiefs. Trent, William, uh, Trent Taylor is a player who does not screw up punt returns. He had 85 punt return opportunities with the 49ers from 2017 to 2020 and zero muffs. He's got over 200 punt return opportunities, 212 to be exact over the course of his entire career, which went to Cincinnati and then to Chicago, and only three muffed punts. Two of those three came last season in a rain and wind game at Cleveland. So Trent Taylor is as reliable as they get at punt returner. And let's be honest, given the way that the league has trended at this position, you can do a whole lot worse than a guy that just sits back there and is an automatic non-muff guy. Is a guy that's – it doesn't matter. He could call for fair catches every single time, and it would still be fine. Taylor, though, in the two seasons that he has delivered enough punt returns to qualify for the league lead, he's ranked number eight and number nine in yards per punt return. In fact, Taylor's average of over nine yards per punt return in 2017 for the 49ers remains the highest yards per punt return that the 49ers have enjoyed in the Shanahan Lynch regime. So they're bringing Trent Taylor in to raise the floor at that position. Trent Taylor's initial foray with the 49ers was derailed by back and foot injuries. He was on the injury report with a back injury in 2018, and then a foot that it just would never heal, several complications. I remember he was in a walking boot for months, Trent Taylor was, in that 2019 season. That really, really sent him into a, a career tailspin at the time. And then the back injury flared up again and essentially ended his time with the 49ers. His contract expired after the 2020 season. But we didn't see a whole lot of Trent Will uh, – Trent, I keep on saying Trent Williams. Trent, didn't see a whole lot of Trent Taylor until after the 2017 and 2018 seasons. So Trent Taylor is a player who has not been on the injury report with either Cincinnati or Chicago at all since – for, with back and foot injuries since his time with the 49ers. So the, the two injuries that did derail him over those first four years, they have not been issues, at least on the documented injury report, 
since then. I talk about the importance of a punt returning floor. We have to talk about Taylor's roster possibilities because obviously just being a punt returner might be a little bit tricky with the numbers since the 49ers do have a loaded team. But I can explain now and show you on the depth chart how this may work. I haven't even added Trent Taylor into the mix yet, but now we can. We can add him, and right now the 49ers have all 53 spots taken, but we'll add Trent Taylor into the projection just to see how it might look. Put him at that backup slot position. Maybe he pairs well with Brock Purdy. Maybe he doesn't. But I'll tell you that Trent Taylor has not logged more than 151 offensive snaps since he left the 49ers. This is not a high-volume snap guy on offense. He is more of that special teams weapon, that punt return weapon, and we could talk about the importance of the punt returning floor forever. But as far as actual roster presence, I think that this is an emergency wide receiver setup in all likelihood for the 49ers. And you may not even have to carry him on the initial 53-man roster because you can see how crowded things are. By the way, new players for the 49ers signed from other teams this offseason are highlighted in teal. Taylor and his arrival here, if the season were to start today, if you had to make the roster cut down right now, you'd have to push somebody that is currently on the 53-man roster off of it. And that is even if Dre Greenlaw is on the pup list. That may not be feasible to do, although training camp and the draft, that's still going to change these numbers. So you can't obsess too much over them right now. I do think that Taylor is a legitimate candidate for the 49ers to be on the practice squad, that they could probably get away with sneaking him onto the practice squad and then use the whole call-up procedure and then obviously use the fact that nothing stays static in the NFL. Guys are going to get hurt. Guys are going to get demoted. Guys are going to get cut. You could even have trades. Just make sure that he's in the building so that way you can have him for the games as the season gets more important over the course of time. The debilitating punt return stuff that's just absolutely killed the 49ers has happened in huge games in either January or February with that NFC title game in the 2011 season and with the Super Bowl this past year. So raising the floor of the punt returning position, there are certain times of the year where that's more important than others. So I think in a worst case scenario here, Trent Taylor is somebody that can be in the building on the 49ers larger roster, the 70 man roster, which includes the practice squad. And he could be somebody that they call up for more important times of the season. But in the best case scenario, he's somebody that still may have some juice left in the tank and he could really contribute in a spot role at the receiver position. Last year, you had Ray Ray McLeod. Over two seasons, you had Ray Ray McLeod at that punt returner position, and he was able to deliver on offense. Is Trent Taylor that type of player? Well, I can tell you that a couple seasons ago, he had 151 snaps with Cincinnati on offense. It's not a whole lot of snaps, but maybe he can fill in in a pinch. We'll see what Chris Conley is able to do as far as working his way onto the 53 man. They used Conley last year as one of those guys that was on the practice squad that they yo-yoed up and down, ultimately found his way to the 53-man roster. So maybe that's Taylor this year, or maybe that's Conley again. And obviously you have Ronnie Bell, who's going to be in his second NFL season. The thing about Ronnie Bell is that he was probably the leader in the clubhouse before this signing of Trent Taylor to be the punt returner. But we saw last season how sketchy that was with Ronnie Bell. He only had a few reps, but he didn't look comfortable back there. And people are underestimating how difficult it is to just get back there and call for a fair catch. You got bodies flying around. It's a high pressure situation. The fact that Trent Taylor allows you to just check out and know that it's an almost all likelihood going to be okay, given the 49ers tumultuous franchise history in this regard, given the fact that, you know, just last year that history reared its ugly head, there's inherent value in that. You do have to raise the floor at the position and that's what the 49ers have been able to do. Now, they can still pick up a potential punt returner in the NFL draft, and that could make Trent Taylor's roster chances slimmer. That's very possible. But we've seen a very specific theme throughout free agency, and that is raising the floor of problem points so that way you can go into the draft without having to worry about targeting anything specifically. You're much more likely to be able to go after best player available in the draft. So with all these 
Teal additions in free agency, I think that we see a unifying theme. Somebody like Leonard Floyd, Jordan Elliott, Yatur Gross Matos, the trade from Leek Collins. 49ers have raised the ceiling of problem spots along the defensive line. Devondre Campbell, third linebacker. He can help out while Dre Greenlaw is unavailable if that ends up happening. That has raised the ceiling. Ezekiel Turner has raised the ceiling of special teams. Isaac Yidham has raised the ceiling of the cornerback spot opposite Charvarius Ward whenever Diamond Lenore has to play inside at nickelback. Eric Saubert has raised the ceiling of the tight end two position. He's a veteran who's been around the league for a while. Josh Dobbs, well, you lost Sam Darnold. That raises the ceiling of QB2. So across the entire roster, you have, I should say, raised the floor. Across the entire roster, you've raised the floor of so many different positions. So as you raise the floor, you can now turn to the draft to potentially raise the ceiling if you are the 49ers. And you've got 10 picks in order to do so. So Taylor is on the roster for a very specific purpose. I should probably add return specialist positions onto this depth chart. Why don't we add punt returner for right now onto this last row? And why don't we put Trent Taylor in there? The interesting news, and I think it's good news for the 49ers, is that kick returner is no longer that much of a specialist position. With the new rules, I think you don't have to go out and get somebody specific for that. I know Ray Ray McLeod had that job specifically along with the punt returner position in the past. But now you can think about just tossing Debo Samuel and Christian McCaffrey back there. Lowered injury risk. It's more like a play from scrimmage. Makes a whole lot of sense to me, given what we've seen out of the new kick return rules to do that. But punt returner, that's a hard job, and it still has to be a very specific duty for a player. You have to have a specific skill set to get back there and do it. And I think that Trent Taylor works perfectly for the 49ers in that regard, at least to raise the floor, right? As long as you have that, then you could start taking bigger swings. Maybe in the draft, you stumble across an electric receiver who can return punts at a very efficient rate with a high floor and a high ceiling, and he contributes more than Trent Taylor does on offense. But heading into the draft, you at least want to make sure that the bottom does not completely fall out. And that's why Trent Taylor is here to reunite with his friend, George Kittle. Go back to the 2017 draft. Kittle and Taylor were both fifth-round picks in the first go-round of a Kyle Shanahan-John Lynch draft. There they are. This is a social media post from George Kittle. Coach Yak is the one that grabbed that off Instagram and put it on Twitter. And now I grabbed it and put it on the YouTube. So any questions on this Tuesday afternoon, I am very happy to answer them. See people talking about Roger Rosengarten. 49ers worked him out in Seattle. Fastest tackle, fastest offensive lineman in this draft. There's a decent chance the 49ers pick him. So many connections with Roger Rosengarten. Ed McCaffrey was his coach in high school, went to CMC's high school, Valor Christian. And Joe Staley has actually been training Roger Rosengarten. Joe Staley, maybe the fastest lineman of all time in the NFL. I mean, Joe Staley was a track star back in Michigan in high school. And now he's training the fastest offensive lineman in this draft pool in Roger Rosengarten. Who's competing with Taylor for punt returner? Well, I'll put Ronnie Bell into the second slot right here. But again, Ronnie Bell looked shaky at best in that job last year. I think it was imperative for the 49ers to bring in some talent to raise the floor of that position. So as of right now, Taylor and Bell, emergency returner might be Christian McCaffrey or Brandon Ayuk, who's done it before for San Francisco. But I don't think that you want to use a premium piece on this. You know, the people are concerned that Trent Taylor is not going to be a premium piece for the 49ers offense, I think are missing the point. I don't think that you usually want to stick a premium piece back there at punt returner. These, these are specialty jobs for a reason. You want somebody who's not going to screw it up. And Trent Taylor has been really, really good at that over the course of his career. Again, this is the key stat that helps you make sense of the signing. Back when he was in San Francisco, Trent Taylor fielded 85 punts and there were zero muffs from him.
Yes, and another uh, – I'm here. We could put Kyle Yush. Uh, this is not a joke that's on the screen right now. We can stick Kyle Yush check into that third-string punt returner role. There you go. Because – Kyle Juszczyk has been back there as an emergency man for the 49ers in practice. He's just fair caught everything, but he's done a really good job fair catching it. That is not an easy skill. You've got a helmet on that blocks your vision. You've got bodies flying towards you. You've got a full stadium, a lot of pressure. These punters these days, they can put some funky spin on their kicks. So it's not easy to gauge where it's going to be. You're dealing with wind. You're dealing with sun, different elements. It's tougher than catching a fly ball to center field, and that's something that isn't easy for the average person. So you want to find somebody who really treats this like his craft, where this is not just some kind of side duty, that this is this is the job. And Trent Taylor is somebody who truly specializes in punt returns. 49ers have learned the hard way in the past when punt returner is a position that maybe isn't prioritized or – just as a position where you don't have the surest of returners back there, it can really, really hurt you. But Kyle Juszczyk is somebody that, yeah, he can give you a decent enough floor, but he's not going to be returning any of these kicks. It's going to be a fair catch job for Juszczyk. Somebody like Trent Taylor has actually delivered the best, most efficient punt returning season for the 49ers under Shanahan. That was back in 2017. Trent Taylor's health has been good lately. As I said, it was the back and the foot injuries that really derailed his first stint with the 49ers. He has not been on the injury report at all with a back or a foot injury since leaving the 49ers. And again, this is not a high-profile signing. It's a signing that the 49ers made that people recognize because of the history. And here's some of the history but it is not something that it's going to completely break the 49ers roster if Trent Taylor does get hurt again. I guarantee you that they signed him to something close to the veteran minimum. Maybe they tossed in a little bit extra there for Trent Taylor because of his veteran status, because of the fact that he has been healthy over the past few years and because he can help at such an important position of need. But it's not like the 49ers' fortunes are living or dying based on this signing. They've got the roster room. In fact, right now they have 14 90-man roster spots left, and we'll see how this all shuffles out. Why can't Danny Gray do it? Well, because Trent Taylor's better at it. I mean, speed is not what you're going to prioritize at punt returner. If you, the priority at punt returner is not screwing it up. Trent Taylor did not screw it up when he was with the 49ers. Eight, eight, again, 85 chances, no muffs. You have to trust who you put back there. This has lost the 49ers massive games in their franchise history. The floor is much higher than the ceiling. Maybe Danny Gray would have a higher ceiling, but first you've got to catch the ball. You've got to decide when to catch it, when to let it go. These punters are getting better and better. The coverage is getting better and better. Danny Gray can't do it because he's not as good at, as Trent Taylor at it. That, that's the simple truth. Trent Taylor's a proven punt returner in the NFL. He's proven that high floor that you need that is imperative, especially for a good team like the 49ers. Great segment from Brock Purdy on Pat McAfee show today. Yeah, it was really good. I mean, we learned about the Brock Purdy coyote story. And now I wonder if Trent Taylor does get in on offense for the 49ers. I don't know if he's had the same burst that he has had a, that he had as a rookie ever since he hurt his back and then he had the foot injury in 2019. I mean, he was electric as a rookie, paired really well with Jimmy Garoppolo. But I do wonder if they he does get a few snaps in there, specialty snaps, how well he's going to pair with Brock Purdy, who sees the field so well, who's got a nice release, who's able to hit that slot receiver with some consistency. It's definitely something to keep in mind as we evaluate how Trent Taylor progresses with the 49ers over the course of this offseason. And go for broke says what I just did in fewer words. Just because a guy has speed doesn't mean he's a good returner, even an acceptable returner. I mean, returning is an art. It is not a track meet. It is an art. You're not just lining up and sprinting. I mean, first, obviously, you've got to catch the punt. 
But before you do that, actually, it's you have to align yourself to catch it. You have to position yourself to run after you catch it. You have to decide whether or not it's worth catching. There are so many variables that you've got to execute on the fly while the coverage team is sprinting at you. This is one of the tougher jobs in football. It's not easy to go back there and field a punt. So just putting a guy back there because he's fast is one of the dumber things you could do. And teams aren't going to do that. That's why the 49ers are happy to bring Trent Taylor back into the fold. Being Butterfly points out that special teams players don't get enough recognition or respect. I think that's true. I think special teams. And you know what? The 49ers have focused so much on special teams. That's been a theme over the course of this offseason. I mentioned that one of the themes has been raising the floor of the roster at different spots. But look at all the signings that they've made with a clear eye on special teams. Isaac Yidam is going to be a big special teams contributor for the 49ers. Chase Lucas was the gunner for Detroit last year. He's a good gunner, and I think he's going to make the roster because of his abilities as a gunner. I think Rocky Yassin is going to have to play special teams if he makes this roster. Go through the linebackers. Ezekiel Turner was an ace. He's actually blocked the Mitch Wisnowski punt before back in 2020. So Ezekiel Turner, that is a signing that's geared towards special teams. Yatur Gross Matos, definitely a signing that's going to feature some special teams play. Trent Taylor, Patrick Taylor Jr. I mean, all these guys can contribute in that phase of the game. And the 49ers ranked low in special teams last year. They're back down in the 20s. They want to bump that back up to at least league average. So that's been a focus of the offseason. And this signing of Trent Taylor continues that focus. This is correct. The 49ers were number 25 in special teams DVOA last year. They were only worse in 2021 under Shanahan. That was number 26. And after 2021, they invested a whole lot in special teams. That's when they brought in Ray Ray McLeod on the two-year contract. They got a lot better in 2022, but it regressed again in 2023. Yeah, I, I agree with Mike here. You just need special teams to be ranking in the top half of the league if you're the 49ers. When you have such a good offense, and I think the 49ers have improved their defense, they can bring it back up to the top five. They slid the top 12 uh, to, to number 12 last year. But when you have such a good offense and defense, that special teams just can't screw it up. It can't be 25 or lower. And again, without the special teams screw up in the Super Bowl, the 49ers likely have the Lombardi Trophy. They likely have six of them in the building right now. So you're working to get special teams back to the top half of the league. They gave up a big return against the Green Bay Packers. Obviously, there was the screwed up punt that hit off of Darrell Luter Jr. against the Chiefs. I thought Jake Moody improved over the course of the season. I think they probably feel really good about their second year kicker heading into 2024. But the return positions just didn't do enough for the 49ers throughout the course of the entire year. And that was even after they signed a specialist for that job through Ray Ray McLeod in 2022. So I find it really, really important for the 49ers to make sure that those return positions have it buttoned down. I think that you might really see Debo Samuel and Christian McCaffrey on the kick returns with the new rules. And now you have Trent Taylor as a candidate for the punt return position. And of course, you can use that practice squad as much more of a taxi squad now. He doesn't necessarily have to make the 53-man roster out of the gate to be a valuable piece of this football team. Isaac goes to the blast from the past. Never forget Blake Costanzo on special teams. I mean, those Harbaugh 49ers, especially 2011, had a really, really good special teams unit. That was the best in the league. The irony is that it was special teams that sunk them. So in the regular season, awesome. But then the Kyle Williams game happened, which just underscores that if you don't have that floor at punt returner, 
it could sink a whole lot of everything. It could could be a whole lot of trouble. So the 49ers trying to avoid that, and they bring Trent Taylor back to the team. I really don't understand how I could be here doing a show about the 49ers raising the floor punt returner, which is indisputably a necessary move for this team. And people start saying, no, they should be improving the offensive line instead, as if signing Trent Taylor to one of your 90 roster spots, the something that's likely close to the league minimum, is going to stop you from investing in the offensive line. This binary thinking needs to stop. Football teams are massive operations, and you have to address several different parts of the operation. Just because you sign a guy near the veteran league minimum doesn't mean that you can't invest in another position. We've already long made it very clear that offensive line was going to be tough to address on the right budget during free agency because it was overpriced because of market dynamics. We've talked about the draft being the most likely avenue for the 49ers to improve their offensive line. So this Trent Taylor signing has nothing to do with what the 49ers might do to improve their offensive line moving forward. Mike's opinion is that free agency is currently trash for offensive players, which might really explain why the 49ers look so much more of the moves and all the new ones are highlighted in teal. They've come on the defensive side of the ball. Offense, they haven't picked up a single starting caliber player. Saubert, Trent Taylor, who is going to be a starter, prob uh, possibly, we'll say possibly for now on special teams, not on offense, Patrick Taylor Jr. and Josh Dobbs, the backup quarterback. But Defense, you've got Malik Collins, Leonard Floyd, Devondre Campbell, potentially, and Isaac Yidham, all guys who might start for the 49ers. So th their, their spending in free agency has definitely reflected what, what Mike is saying down on the bottom of the screen. Terrell Owens still out there? Not really, but Tariq Owens, his son is. You could bring him in as an undrafted free agent. He was at the local pro day a week ago. Thank you, John. I hope that everybody is here for more level-headed reporting. I mean, to be honest, people just need to get real with themselves. The first thing I saw online when this Trent Taylor news came out was this slew of negativity. And I'll put it bluntly, if you're negative about a minimum signing, which this likely is or something close to that, if you're negative about that, you don't know the game. Like, it's as simple as that. You do not know football if you're bringing negativity into a discussion like this. This is only upside for the 49ers because they had a vacuum at punt returner. It's cost them in the past. So you bring in a guy who had zero muffs when he was with you over four seasons from 2017 onward. You're simply trying to raise the floor of a position, and you've done so now at little to no financial risk at all. You know, there, there's always this need for people because negativity sells. I get it. Negativity sells. You get more clicks if you put something out there that is inflammatory. But reason wins. Logic and reason win while negativity might sell in the short term. So logic and reason is obviously going to sell a whole lot more in the long term. This situation right here with Trent Taylor it's cut and dry. The 49ers need to raise the floor of the punt returning position. They've done it at very little risk, and we'll see if Trent Taylor can stick with the football team. We still have the draft to go. We still have training camp to go, and I think there are many creative ways to keep him in the building, potentially even through the practice squad if they can't fit him on the 53-man roster. Invader 49ers says he's been a fan since 1979 when Bill Walsh drafted Joe Montana in the third round. This is good. Speaking of Montana, Adrian Perez says the 49ers are building the new Tony Montana squad with all of these special teams oriented additions. We'll see where this ends up for them as far as a DVOA ranking next year. Dan Delurio has a smart comment. He's been loving this offseason. The 49ers have added value everywhere and stayed away from the splashy signings. We clearly know what we have, and the draft will bring a new edge to this team, says Dan. And I think the draft, I mean, you take 
what you've built through free agency. And that's all the, the teal shading here. And now you can infuse this roster with youth and you find a way to bring in guys who can actually make the 53 man, which is going to be tough, especially if you hold on to all 10 picks. Not all 10 are making the team, that's for sure. We'll see how many of the 10 make the team. But at least if you use all 10 picks, you get more darts to throw at the wall because that's what the draft is. It's a dart throwing contest. You never know when you're going to hit the bullseye. You can try to hit the bullseye. You can get as close to it as possible, but some luck is going to be involved, so you'd rather have more darts to throw at the wall. At least that's one school of thought. If you really like a player in the first round that you need to trade up for, then you can consolidate those picks. I proposed a mock draft with a trade up. Maybe I'll make another mock draft with, without a trade up. Maybe I can make one with a trade down to get more of those picks. But the 49ers have essentially armed themselves, and this is to Dan's point, with the ability to do whatever they want in the draft, whatever seems to work best on next Thursday, next Friday. Once you've filled all the holes and you don't have to make splashy signings to fill all the holes, you give yourself more option power when the draft, in fact, happens. It's like staying in a good down and distance situation in the game. It gives you more play calls to turn to. You don't want to enter the draft facing third down and 18. You want the draft to be a second and two. You want the draft to be something where you could run or you could pass. You could trade up or you could trade down. You could stay put. And I think that's what the 49ers have been working to do over the course of this free agency so far. Mike jokes, bring back CJ Beathard to complete the 2017 team. Nice. Love it. I'm in Nashville right now. CJ Beathard, Nashville native. That fits. Fits the theme that we're talking about. Imagine the 49ers going best player available in the first round. And they might. Especially number 31. They absolutely might. To fill the 2017 re reunion, go for broke is right. You'd have to get Solomon Thomas as well. Those of you just joining, the 49ers have brought back Trent Taylor for a very specific role, and that is punt returner. I don't care how many fair catches he had. Uh, it's a pl net plus play to fair catch and not muff a punt. Just consider the fact that two years ago, it took almost all of the season for the NFL to see its first punt return for a touchdown. It is imperative, therefore, to not screw these plays up. The ceiling on punt returns has gone down naturally just because coverage units and punters are so good. So you better not let that floor go down. You better raise that floor as much as possible. The ceiling's got a limit in the NFL. The floor, though, uh, floor has much less of a limit. It could, you could fall straight through. It, there's a big chasm there if you've got a punt returner who can't take care of the football, who can't handle the many challenging aspects of that job, locating the football through his helmet, determining if he's going to try to catch it, gauging where the coverage is, catching a ball coming down from high heights with his hands, pressing it up against his body, making sure it doesn't clang off of his pads. I mean, muff punts are damaging. They not only win or lose games, they could lose you championships, and the 49ers have seen that happen. So 85 punts fielded with San Francisco, no muffs for Trent Taylor. This is about the floor. It is not about the ceiling. You're wasting your time if you're obsessing with ceiling on punt returns. You're definitely not wasting your time if you raise the floor. Taylor, back and foot injuries seem to be in the rearview mirror. He has not appeared on the injury report since leaving the 49ers after the 2020 season with either a back or a foot injury. And those were the, the two that derailed his time with the 49ers. And the roster possibilities, well, I think that they're multifold. We'll see what the 49ers do in the draft, but Taylor could be a practice squad guy for them. He could be somebody. The practice squad is so much more flexible than it used to be. More like a taxi squad now. You call guys up, send them back down for games. There are limits, but then you could also permanently call a guy up to the 53-man roster. And because there are injuries over the course of a season, you just want to give yourself options. It's not just about the 53. It's about the 53 plus the 16-man practice squad. And then there's one international exception that you could bring in. 
Alfredo Gutierrez was that guy. He's not on the team anymore. But they had a 70-man roster over the past few years. And they were able to, to use that practice squad as an augmentation for the 53-man roster. All right, back to the 49ers Q&A. Joe points out depth signing and free agency protects against a possible reach in the draft that doesn't pan out. Splash free agency clicks, but when is the last time the free agency winner hoisted the trophy? I would offer that the free agency winner is incorrectly crowned each year because the analysts don't know what they're looking for when they declare a free agency winner. They just look for the most big names. Free agency is about adding at the correct margins. I think the 49ers believe they've added at the appropriate margins with Jordan Elliott. I think that's a good second-line defensive tackle with Yatur Gross Matos, who should be able to fit that inside-out position well on their defensive line. I think even somebody like Eric Saubert, he got 400000 guaranteed, by the way, could be a, a good floor-raising addition for that tight end room. So it, you are exactly right, Joe. It is about the signings that aren't as sexy in free agency so that you could take those bigger swings in the draft, those reaches, if you will, in the draft. Or as Mike simplifies, free agency is about getting value. All right, I'm waiting for a few more questions. I could run you through a couple more pieces of news from today while we're waiting. Sione Vaki, the safety out of Utah, visited Levi Stadium today alongside a lot of other players. The 49ers love to host their rookie prospects in clumps. They like to see how they interact with the other players. So Sione Vaki, Mike Hall, Trevin Wallace, all those guys were around today. And a lot of them were posting pictures from Levi's Stadium. This is Sione Vaki, the safety out of Utah. He might remind you of Talano Ufanga with his play style. Now, Vaki, this guy's a stud. He played running back and safety in college. If you want to get an update on the 49ers visit list, here it is. Kingsley Swamataya also has visited. He becomes the second offensive lineman that we know has, was at a top 30 visit with the 49ers. He joins Caden Wallace out of Penn State. Decamarian Richardson, the cornerback out of Mississippi State, was reportedly around today. Eric All, the tight end out of Iowa, is somebody we've re recently added to the list. Same thing with Tatum Bethune, who's a good coverage linebacker out of Florida State. So this is who we know has visited the 49ers so far. You could have 30 of these, and I, I think San Francisco likely to still have a few more. How bad does the Devontae Smith extension hurt the 49ers in negotiations with Ayuk? It doesn't hurt them at all. I had projected Ayuk to get more than $25 million even before Devontae Smith signed this deal. So it, the floor for Ayuk, he's so good that the floor was already above $25 million annually. The I, I think it's going to be above $50 million fully guaranteed money. Those aren't numbers that Devontae Smith has touched. He, he hit $25 million annually, but that's just APY. That includes the funny money. Not anywhere close to over $50 million guaranteed. So the numbers that Ayuk was going to fetch, they were already higher than what Devontae Smith signed for. So I don't think it affects the Ayuk situation at all. JM says the muff punts are a killer. He's glad that Taylor's back. He's going to have a good rapport with Brock Purdy. And even if he doesn't have a great rapport with Brock Purdy, even if he only plays 100 offensive snaps or less, punt returner is that important. You can't lose your hopes and dreams 
because of muff punts. You have to insulate that position. And I think the 49ers are making sure that they're doing that. So that's why they brought back Trent Taylor. Here is one more look at Trent Taylor with his old friend, George Kittle. Quality time is back with the 49ers. Everybody, thanks for joining. We will talk to you very soon.